What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's Kit Kat here. Uh, sorry I haven't been able to post in a pretty long time actually. But um, I've just had some personal issues to take care of. But I promise that I will at least start uploading again. Um, it's gonna take a while for me to get back to my normal routine. But I will not disappoint you guys. I will give you guys content as best I can. With that being said, let's get on with today's video. Um, due to last video of how I reacted to Jaden's latest upload, I decided that I wanted to share some of my favorite animators with you guys. And with that being said, with my break, from uploading I've been able to let them like start uploading more so that way like I can react to the video as well like along with you guys and one that I am going to go over today is Emmy Richu I just recently found out who she is and she's actually a really good per she's actually a really good animator too and her stories are kind of quirky, but also like really fun to enjoy. And her most recent upload is My Asian slash American Identity Crisis. And I mean, there's really not much to say about that title, is there? But anyways, let us get into the video, shall we? Today's topic is a bit more personal to me, and for a short while, I thought maybe it wouldn't be entertaining enough to talk about, but I also know that there's probably a lot of people who can relate to my experiences growing up. So here we go. Let's talk about my Asian American identity crisis. So quick summary on how I got here. My parents were immigrants who moved from South Korea to America in the 1980s to start a new life where they had my two older brothers Damn. and me. So while my ethnicity is Korean, my nationality has always been American. Growing up, I always felt really distant from my Korean background. I'm not sure when it started, but for as long as I can remember, I've always felt kind of disconnected from it. It didn't really help that we lived in a super white area, so there weren't many other Koreans to talk to. I remember my dad would always be like, why don't you have more Korean friends? I don't know, Dad. You kind of, kind of didn't give me a whole lot to work with here. I'd like to mention that despite growing up in an area with very little diversity, I was never bullied specifically for being Asian. Aside from the occasional annoying microaggressions and Asian jokes, from what I can recall, nobody had ever gone out of their way to make me feel isolated from my race. Just making it clear that this video has very little to do with bullying and more to do with my own internal struggle. So where should I start? When I was in fourth grade, my music class was playing an end of the year party and our music teacher told us to bring in CDs so she could play our favorite songs. Now, I didn't own any CDs and my older brothers were definitely They're not going to let borrow any of theirs. So my mom gave me a CD with Korean music to bring to class. I remember adamantly refusing to take it because I knew it wouldn't fit with anyone else's music and nobody would be able to understand it. She insisted I bring it and that you'll be introducing your classmates to something new. I it's didn't true. want to show up empty handed so I reluctantly took it with me to class the next day and handed it off to my teacher, secretly hoping that we'd run out of time before she could play it. Now I'm well aware that in this current age, blasting Korean music in your class party would probably make things mega hype. But keep in mind, this was like 2005. That sort of thing wasn't going to catch on for like another six years. During the party, we heard hits from Usher, Shakira, the Black Eyed Peas, Mariah Carey, oh, Linkin Park. Park That's my, you know, that is my stuff right there. Everyone was familiar with. And then my mom's CD was played. And just as I'd feared, all my classmates reacted with, what the heck is that? I can't understand what they're saying. This sounds weird. And confused laughter filled the room. So I spent the rest of the class bawling underneath one of the chairs. Now listen, before you go canceling my entire fourth grade class, I know for a fact my classmates weren't trying to hurt my feelings. They were kids, and when you introduce kids to something unfamiliar or strange, they're gonna laugh. My music teacher sternly lectured the rest of the class about the importance of embracing different cultures, but I stayed underneath that chair until the bell rang. I wasn't crying because I thought my classmates were being mean. 
I was crying because I was embarrassed. I knew this would be their reaction, and I told my mom this exact thing was going to happen. That small event might have been the start of it. I'm not really sure. Alright, Asian viewers, how many times have you heard something like, Whoa, your English is really good. I don't hear an accent. I'm not I Asian, but I still get that time, phrase. Here's my secret. Ever since I was a child, my English has always been significantly better than my Korean. I spoke only English at school and at home, and since I didn't really have other Korean friends, there was rarely ever a time where I'd have to use Korean. This resulted in years of me being comfortable with responding to my parents in English, even if they were using Korean. I think they assumed that if they kept speaking Korean, I'd eventually pick it up and master the grammar and vocab and be fluent. But that never really happened. As each year passed, my parents would become increasingly more worried about my refusal to learn. One summer, when I was around 11 or 12, I was picking blueberries with my dad at a blueberry farm. We would call out to each other back and forth. He'd call out in Korean and I'd respond in English. At one point, another nearby blueberry picker commented on this exchange. I couldn't help but overhear, but I noticed you two talking in two different languages. What's that all about? Oh, this is my daughter. She understands Korean, but can't speak it very well, so she uses English. Oh, that's a shame. Well, it's not too late for her to learn, right? Well, a shame? How many languages do you know, lady? It bothered me a little that she called it a shame. That wasn't the first time I'd heard that, and it most certainly wasn't going to be the last. I, I, Whether I it was feel that pain. From church, my grandparents, other Korean relatives, or pain. my own parents, my inability to properly speak Korean was oftentimes referred to as a shame. I knew my parents felt embarrassed every time they had to explain to someone that I only used English. And truthfully, I was really embarrassed too. But I was hesitant to speak Korean because I was worried that I'd make a fool out of myself from screwing up. But because I didn't try, I never got better, which turned into this vicious cycle of little improvement. With every new birthday, the window of time for how bad I could be at Korean felt like it was getting shorter and shorter, and the weight of shame and dishonor felt heavier and heavier. I put a lot of energy into spelling and reading comprehension. The lowest grade I ever got on a spelling test was an 88% in like fourth grade and I cried that day. I prided myself on being a proficient essay writer and an avid reader. I needed to be excellent at all things English based because I didn't know how to be good at the other language I was supposed to know. Don't get me wrong, I genuinely loved to read and write, but I think subconsciously I wanted to separate myself from my Korean roots as much as possible. And I also think, subconsciously, that the fear of shame eventually turned into resentment. As a kid, I hated visiting Korea, and I dreaded the annual family trip because it only further reminded me of how out of place I was every time I went, especially amongst my Korean-speaking relatives who I couldn't really hold a conversation with. I hated talking to my grandparents on the phone because they knew that all I knew how to say was 할머니, 할아버지, 안녕하세요, and 네, and every time they'd go 아이고, 우리 누나 한국말 잘하네! And I knew they were just saying that out of pity. Come on, Graham and Gramps, you don't have to lie to me like that! <sighs> Man, it was embarrassing. The resentment went past just not wanting to use the language. I convinced myself that I didn't like Korean food, that I thought humbooks were ugly, and that I just didn't vibe with other Korean people. Sometimes I even felt envious of other Koreans, particularly the ones who grew up similar to me but seemed completely different. My dad's a pastor, with a lot of Korean pastor friends, meaning I often met other pastor's kids who were all super in touch with their Korean background, super involved in their church life, and were usually musically gifted in some way. I happened to be none of these things, and it sort of felt like that meant there was nothing for my parents to be proud of in comparison. Like, My kid is in the honors program at school, and is set to go on their fourth mission trip this summer. What's your kid been up to? She, uh, she likes to draw. Been doing lots of that. Oh, like fashion design? Animation for a potential career in Disney? No anime. Oh, Ew. Yeah, I know. A lot of people told me that watching K-dramas is a good way to practice my Korean, but admittedly, I was overall disinterested in consuming any kind of Korean media, and I convinced myself that I probably wouldn't be into it anyway. I was pretty stubborn about this, except for one exception, music. Music is almost like always an Alice exception when it comes age, to other, I've like, always had a pretty big language barrier countries between us, and stuff so like it that. was usually a little awkward whenever we visited each other because we weren't able to have an actual conversation. 
our parents would drop us off at a mall or something and be like, okay, have fun catching up, girls. Pick you up in a, a few, few hours. hours. And we'd be speaking in a weird Frankenstein mix of broken English and broken Korean. Well, one summer, Alice showed up with an iPod. And during that week she was visiting, she introduced me to her favorite music artists, most of it being K-pop. We'd share her earbuds during long car rides, and she'd play music on her phone speaker at night when we couldn't fall asleep. We didn't really need to have long, extensive conversations. We'd just jam out to her favorite songs, and it was a great way for me to connect with her without the need to awkwardly stumble through a language barrier. That's probably one of my fondest memories of my cousin, and after she left, that's when I first started listening to Korean music for the first time in my life. And as ridiculous and silly as it probably sounds, it was one of the only things that kept me somewhat connected yeah, to my Korean baby. identity. Did I understand any of the words? No, of course not. But I didn't feel ashamed about not understanding because I didn't have to in order to enjoy it. Also, Google was great <laughs> for looking up translations. You want to hear about one of my biggest regrets? I think the worst thing I've ever said to my dad was in high school when we were having a huge argument and I told him, I wish I had white parents. I know it sounds silly, but I really broke his heart that day. And even though I was angry from feeling suffocated and trapped mm. by sheltered parenting, I failed to recognize that raising three very Americanized children in an unfamiliar country must have been difficult. I regret every time I've ever called myself a Twinkie or whitewashed as if it was something to be proud about and not a totally obvious proclamation of my insecurities. It wasn't like I woke up one morning and decided, I don't want to be Korean anymore. It was a natural progression, and I didn't even realize the kind of self-loathing I was internalizing until I was older. I sort of wish I had someone there to tell me that it was okay to not be confident in the language, and that just because I was like 16 with the reading and speaking level of a kindergartner, I wasn't automatically a total failure or a lost cause for it. And maybe you're thinking, but Emily, what about your two older brothers? Guess what? They were going through the same exact thing. You didn't think it was just me, did you? I think we were all separately dealing with our own weird identity crises, and in a way, I think I was just following in their footsteps of trying to separate themselves from their Korean roots. As an adult now, I'm trying harder to embrace the Korean side of myself a bit more. I don't feel the same resentment as I did when I was younger, but the shame oh my still God, that's back every now I get excited to visit Korea now, but when I do go, I'm quickly reminded of how much of a foreigner I am. I get a little self-conscious, especially if I'm with my parents and strangers get super confused with the language disparity between us and then my parents get self-conscious because then they're questioned with, why did you teach your kid Korean if you're both Korean? You know, no bueno feelings all around. I remember the last time I visited Korea, I was walking around with my brother Josh and we kept noticing that older people would just keep staring at us. I asked, why do they keep staring at us? And he just went, it's because they know we're not from here. Like, maybe they could tell we were Korean, but like super off and not right. They could smell the filthy American influences Disgusting. on us or something. I don't know. I also feel like older Koreans just really like to stare for no reason. My oldest brother, Sim, told me that when he had to deal with the old person staring thing, he'd just stare right back at them until they got uncomfortable. But I don't really have the balls to do that myself. Ever since my parents moved to Korea a few years ago, the need to use any Korean has been completely removed from my daily life. And it kind of feels like the language barrier gets a little bigger every time we talk and limits how much we can talk about when we catch up. The easy answer would be to just get better at Korean, and I agree, I should. But I found that it's a lot easier to learn and retain a language when it's something you're interested in learning, rather than something that'll make you feel like a failure if you don't progress as quickly as you should. I should be learning it because being bilingual is super useful and cool, Very not because true. I feel like I owe it to my ancestors, who I fear are all looking down on me in disapproval. And truthfully, I still don't know how to shake that feeling. And that's partly why it took a bit of a while to finally put my thoughts on paper, because I haven't figured out the big secret answer to my identity crisis, and I knew if I waited around for some kind of grand old epiphany to happen, I would have made zero progress. I know there's probably a whole bunch of people watching who have experienced or are experiencing something similar. And if you hey. are, you aren't alone. You aren't a failure or a race traitor for not knowing your parents' native language or struggling to connect with the culture. Of course, I don't mean to say, give up, because it's hard. I think celebrating <laughs> the different cultures and like the facets of who them. you are is important. But I also recognize that it's easy to get discouraged when you grow up in an environment that makes you doubt yourself. 
If I could go back and talk to a younger version of myself, I'd tell her to not let the resentment and fear of shame hold her back from at least trying. But you know, like most things, it's a lot easier said than done. I'm so happy to be finally done with this video. I've actually yeah. had this idea in the back oh of my, my mind God. since around that, that was kind of triggering because it's the same thing with me. Um, I'm Hispanic. I am Puerto Rican, actually, to be specific. Even, but even though I was born and raised in Puerto Rico for a decent amount of time, I ended up learning English a lot better. And kind of like how I'm talking to you guys now, it's, there is no accent. <laughs> like, I sound like I was born and raised here in the United States. But I, I, do know, I do know Spanish. That's the only difference I have from her. I am very fluent in both languages because I speak Spanish in the house. And that is something that me and my parents have actually gotten, like, a connection with, like, speaks we speak spanish in the household so that way i don't lose the language from me speaking english so much with like friends teachers co-workers you name it but yeah i definitely highly recommend that you guys check out emmy Richu if you don't know her already i will put her channel in the description below and that officially ends today's video if you guys enjoyed it make sure to give it a big thumbs up Click subscribe for more content, and I will see you guys in the next video. Deuces!